Okay, it's new project time. So my next project is going to be the Hasegawa Mitsubishi Galant VR4. Seems kind of obscure, right? I don't do a lot of Mitsubishis. Um, I've never even seen this kit before. However, a friend of mine owns a real one. We'll cut right here to a, a short slideshow where you can take a look at the real one. It's a, it's a very interesting green color and a really cool looking car. Well, he managed to find this kit and wants me to build it as a replica of that one in his showroom. He has a little, he owns a car dealership and he has a little showroom area where he keeps some um, classic Mitsubishi cars. It's obviously a Mitsubishi dealer as well. Um, and he keeps some, he keeps some really beautiful uh, old Mitsubishi cars in there. And so this is one of them, and he'd like me to copy it. So we are going to copy it. So let's take a look at what's inside the kit. I've already been in here um, and gone through and taken a look at some stuff, and I've been doing some work on the body. Um, the instru instructions are, are typical Hasegawa, um, simple. Uh, the kit is a curbside, so there's no engine. So we're just going, uh, we're just going right for the body and the chassis and... And that'll be it. This is the body. There were some massive mold seams down the down the fender, which I've already taken care of. I still have to go over that a little bit. And it also had, you can see it in the box art, it had these little like turn signal blinker thingies on the fender like they used to have back in the 70s. Or if it was some kind of an emblem or whatever. But either way, the U.S. version does not have it, so off it went. Um, that has already been removed. Um, the emblems are on the body, so we'll have to uh, paint those very carefully after. Uh, I still have some uh, mold lines and perfections on the back bumper to get rid of, but, um, but that'll happen. It'll go to primer and then paint, and we'll be moving forward. Um, this sprue has the interior uh, chest, uh, the interior pan, excuse me, and um, the detail is very crisp. Like, look around that boot. Um, I, I like it. It is a right-hand drive. We're just going to have to live with that. Got a couple mirrors here. They're going to have to be body color, um, steering wheel seats, um, the exhaust from the underside of the chassis. Even though it is curbside, the uh, the chassis is going to look pretty good. Um, here is the, the chassis. Um, there is a, a separate piece that goes on that contains the suspension and the drivetrain. A little bit of flash there. You don't see a lot of that in Hasegawa. Um, and there is some flash elsewhere in the kit that I was kind of surprised uh, to see. But, um, you know, a little bit of trimming with a razor knife and it's away. Um, you've got the radiator front grille. So you should be able to come up with a very convincing undercarriage given that they give you these um, separate pieces uh, for a curbside. Suspension is separate. Um, so that all works out pretty good. Uh, we've got the glass, one piece glass for all the way around. Some decals, tail lights, headlights. Um, and then we get to the wheels and tires. Hasegawa always has such nice tires. These are beautiful. Um, they are, um, I think they're Pirelli P0s. Let me see. At the risk of giving away my age, I'm hunting for my reading glasses. Where? Oh, here they are. All right, here we go. Um, I think I remember them being Pirelli. Yes, Pirelli P7 uh, Centurado or Centurio or something like that on there. Um, but they look really nice and the wheels are here. And in case you're wondering if the wheels uh, look pretty small, you know, they um, the, the car only has 15 inch wheels on it. I, I thought it was so funny when I was looking at it in his showroom. Um, I'm marveling at this wheel size and how small they look. 15 inch used to be, you know, the standard uh, wheel size back in the, uh, you know, back in the 80s. Uh, you know, you had 15s, uh, you know, you were doing pretty good. And then they then came 17s. Now, now we got 20s, 22s, 24s. It's insane. Um, but that's just the look of it. So, so they, they look kind of small because they, uh, they are, you know, they probably scale out to around 15 inches if uh, Hasegawa did it right. 
So, uh, so that's all the parts of the kit. And we're going to get into this build coming up soon. One thing I wanted to talk briefly about is some glues and some paints. I was at my local hobby shop recently. Now, this is not a paid advertisement. Ravel has not given me any money. I am no longer affiliated with Ravel. I used to work with Ravel USA back when they were Ravel USA, and they would send me kits from time to time, and I would talk about them on the channel and build them. But um, Ravel has not provided me anything. I bought these paints with my own money. and um, But I'm going to mention them because I really like them. Um, if you haven't had a chance, these are available now in the States, and they have been for some time. Um, if you haven't had a chance to try these out, these are great. Um, I've been using them brush painting. I've been using them in the airbrush. You have to thin them a lot. They are very thick. Um, they, um, and you need to stir them. I would not shake them. The way these bottles are, if you shake them and then you open it, oh, it makes a mess. So I would, I would open them and then stir them. Um, but they brush paint absolutely fantastically. And they airbrush very well too with a lot of thinner and in just using distilled water, um, as a thinner. Uh, so, so I'm a fan of these paints. I, I just bought these five colors just to try them, some silvers and some blacks. And, um, but I, but I plan on going and getting every color in the rainbow, uh, at my local hobby shop. Now, I believe I paid three fifty a bottle, $3.50, uh, you know, currently in November, 2021. Um, but while I was there, I also tried, um, some glue. I wanted, I saw this and I was like, Hey, if, you know, I'll give it a shot. Um, this glue is great. And I like it very much because it had, oh, and the metal applicator has come out. There is a metal applicator, um, the little metal pin instead of the plastic one. And, uh, and sometimes it comes out of the glue jar, but uh, that's okay. That's very easily fixed. But it, but it was much better to me than this one. Now, these guys used to have a metal pin, but then they stopped. Now they have this plastic thing, and this glue is... Um, well, I don't like it uh, because it doesn't come out. I can't control it with that stupid plastic tip. So the plastic tip stinks. Um, the other thing I saw, I bought a lot of glue. They must have thought I was nuts buying two glues. I found this stuff at my hobby shop, and I've never heard of these guys, and I've never seen this before, and it's got some kind of German company on here, and it smells a lot like the Ravel. It may very well be the same thing. Who knows? But, but these guys have the metal applicator tip too, which is key. This is key for me in uh, in glue control. But um, again, I'm, I was not provided these products. I'm just passing it along as something new that I've tried that I really, really like. Um, so I just wanted to pass that along. And uh, one other thing that I've recently found and was quite expensive, I found in a Hobby Lobby and it was 30 bucks for this, right? These metallic panel sets. They are made for painting uh, panels on aircraft. You get... Um, you get aluminum, dark aluminum, you get regular aluminum, you get steel, and you get silver. And um, and I've been using these uh, for a couple of builds now for just regular old silvers that are water-based. Um, they, they have a little mixing ball in them, and then you, um, you, know, you shake them, you pop them open. They're pre-thinned for the airbrush. They have a, a really cool applicator that, um, that just has like a little tiny hole in it. And it goes in the airbrush so easily without spilling. Um, so so they're pre-thinned, airbrush ready. I've been using these, and these are also great. So between um, between the Vallejo uh, airbrush pre-mix stuff and the Ravel stuff, I'm very happy with my paints currently. And uh, and now that I've added into these uh, into my glue collection these two glues. Um, I'm very happy with the glues as well. Metal tips is the key. It's got to have the metal tip for me. That's, that's my two cents. So, uh, so stay tuned for the next video. We're going to be jumping right into this, um, build and, uh, getting started on it right away. So enjoy, stay tuned for more. Thank you. Okay. We're getting right started here. I have been, um, working on the, uh, seams on the body and giving it just a light scuff up. She's ready for primer. I was just doing a test fit with the uh, chassis and the interior just to make sure that everything is uh, fits well and everything does and uh, looks like it's gonna be, it, it has these little, uh, these two little notches in the bottom of the body 
that accept the chassis and then a little positive mounting location here in the front. Um, so it looks relatively easy to, uh, to get together and uh, comes apart nice and easy too. So, so there's the interior, the dashboard and the chassis. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I've been uh, test fitting the uh, rear spoiler right here, you see. Uh, which looks nice. I'm debating whether or not I'm going to apply the spoiler before or after paint. I think that's going to stay off oh. because the area between the spoiler and the trunk isn't big enough uh, to get paint in and uh, and it's molded in black. So I actually like molded in black. A lot of people don't um, because you don't really have to worry about the panel lines then because if you when you paint it you know, you're you're always going to have a little bit of that black left in the panel line, uh, which I think is, which looks very realistic in my opinion. Um, but uh, I am going to, the mirrors glue onto the body, like so. And I am going to glue the mirrors on before primer and paint. Um, and then they are on and will get painted just like the body does, so it'll look good because the mirror is body color, as is the little triangle part at the front of the mirror is all body color. So I am going to uh, apply these mirrors and then I am going to take this and give this a bath and wash off any of the mold uh, release agent that is all over it. Um, leave the spoiler off because I will, I will paint that separately. I'll attach that to a, a clippy stick and, uh, and we'll be back. Okay, let me bring you up to date on where we are. I have uh, primered the wheels, so they're ready because the centers of these are body color on the subject car with a silver edge. Um, that'll be easy enough to do the silver edge after. I just wanted to uh, spray these with the body and get them clear coated when I custom mix that color because I only want to mix that color once because it's going to be a custom mix. Um, and then the subject car does not have the hood vents. There were hood vents on this. So I, um, I dremeled them off and now, um, uh, I'm filling to make it nice and smooth. Cause of course they had to be in the middle of the hood, which is a large flat surface. And, uh, you know, that has to be perfectly smooth or else it's going to not look good. Um, and then I have basically prepared all of the parts. The chassis has been painted. The interior tub has been painted. The inside of the subject car is just a sea of black. Um, I'm going to try and break it up a little bit. Um, the undercarriage, even though this is a curbside, has a lot of detail parts, and I am accentuating those by uh, using multiple different silvers. So I'm using four different silvers from a paint kit that I've got, the aluminum, the dark aluminum, the steel, and the silver. So you can see some of the differences here, um, and I believe the gas tank is a third one. Um, so this is the steel, this is the dark aluminum, I think this is the aluminum, and I still have to do some detail painting of the black CV boots and stuff like that, um, and I might spray some of those shafts a different color, we'll see how it looks when I get together, get it together, and then these guys are yet another, I believe these are the silver, um, so I think that the varying colors of metal will look really cool on the underside, it'll add some visual interest. Um, and then these little boots have to be black still, but, um, but progress is being made now. And this is all the parts. I mean, that's it. There's not, um, there's not many parts or to this kit, um, being curbside, um, the interior, the dashboard I have ready to go as well. And, um, I am using for my putty. My, my favorite putty is the Tamaya putty. Um, I like this stuff. It, it cures pretty quickly. Um, and you can also dilute it with lacquer thinner if it's, if it's running a bit too thick on you. I've never had to do that, but knowing that I can, and then I'm using my, uh, my Tamaya sanding or excuse me, 3M sanding sponges. I've got fine and ultra fine. Um, they're a little cheaper than the Tamaya ones. You get them in a big package for a lot less. Uh, and this lasts you a good long time. Um, and then I have a nice finish one here, which is, um, 1500 1200 right here uh which is um very nice to to uh finish up get rid of all the sanding scratches get it looking nice and smooth so uh so that's where i'm at getting ready to uh go into assembly
Um, so I've got the instructions here. Step one is, you know, we're going right for the interior. So I'm at a point now where I will begin uh, doing the additional detail painting and decaling. There are uh, there are a few decals with this kit, some emblems, and um, obviously for the interior, I've got the uh, gauge cluster there. So that is going to be going in, and uh, that's where I'm at. So come back for more soon. Thanks again for watching and following along as I build the Hasegawa Mitsubishi Galant VR4. Go ahead and click that like button and subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Questions and comments, please submit below. Happy to hear from you. Also, if you haven't clicked on the little bell, make sure you click on the little gold bell so you get notifications when I upload new content. Thank you again. See you next time.